Hello guys, and welcome to my channel. Due to YouTube copyright infringement, we only use one picture with voiceover. Thank you for understanding. If you love history and biographies, please leave a like and a sub. Let's start the video. Ivan Pavlov, born September 14th, September 26th, New Style, 1849, Ryazan, Russia, died February 27th, 1936, Leningrad, now St. Petersburg, Russian physiologist known chiefly for his development of the concept of the conditioned reflex. In a now classic experiment, he trained a hungry dog to salivate at the sound of a metronome or buzzer, which was previously associated with the sight of food. He developed a similar conceptual approach, emphasizing the importance of conditioning, in his pioneering studies relating human behavior to the nervous system. He was awarded the Nobel Prize for Physiology or Medicine in 1904 for his work on digestive secretions. Pavlov, the first son of a priest and the grandson of a sexton, spent his youth in Ryazan in central Russia. There, he attended a church school and theological seminary where his seminary teachers impressed him by their devotion to imparting knowledge. In 1870 he abandoned his theological studies to enter the University of St. Petersburg, where he studied chemistry and physiology. After receiving the MD at the Imperial Medical Academy in St. Petersburg, graduating in 1879 and completing his dissertation in 1883, he studied during 1884-86 in Germany under the direction of the cardiovascular physiologist Karl Ludwig, in Leipzig, and the gastrointestinal physiologist Rudolf Heidenhain, in Breslau. Having worked with Ludwig, Pavlov's first independent research was on the physiology of the circulatory system. From 1888 to 1890, in the laboratory of Botkin in St. Petersburg, he investigated cardiac physiology and the regulation of blood pressure. He became so skillful a surgeon that he was able to introduce a catheter into the femoral artery of a dog almost painlessly without anesthesia, and to record the influence on blood pressure of various pharmacological and emotional stimuli. By careful dissection of the fine cardiac nerves, he was able to demonstrate the control of the strength of the heartbeat by nerves leaving the cardiac plexus. By stimulating the severed ends of the cervical nerves, he showed the effects of the right and left vagal nerves on the heart. Pavlov married a pedagogical student in 1881, a friend of the author Fyodor Dostoevsky, but he was so impoverished that at first they had to live separately. He attributed much of his eventual success to his wife, a domestic, religious, and literary woman, who devoted her life to his comfort and work. In 1890 he became Professor of Physiology in the Imperial Medical Academy, where he remained until his resignation in 1924. At the newly founded Institute of Experimental Medicine, he initiated precise surgical procedures for animals, with strict attention to their post-operative care and facilities for the maintenance of their health. During the years 1890-1900 especially, and to a lesser extent until about 1930, Pavlov studied the secretory activity of digestion. While working with Heidenhain, he had devised an operation to prepare a miniature stomach, or pouch. He isolated the stomach from ingested foods while preserving its vagal nerve supply. The surgical procedure enabled him to study the gastrointestinal secretions in a normal animal over its lifespan. This work culminated in his book Lectures on the Work of the Digestive Glands in 1897. By observing irregularities of secretions in normal unanesthetized animals, Pavlov was led to formulate the laws of the conditioned reflex, a subject that occupied his attention from about 1898 until 1930. He used the salivary secretion as a quantitative measure of the psychical, or subjective, activity of the animal. In order to emphasize the advantage of objective, physiological measures of mental phenomena and higher nervous activity, he sought analogies between the conditional, commonly though incorrectly translated as conditioned, reflex and the spinal reflex. According to the English physiologist Sir Charles Sherrington, the spinal reflex is composed of integrated actions of the nervous system involving such complex components as the excitation and inhibition of many nerves induction, i.e., 
the increase or decrease of inhibition brought on by previous excitation, and the irradiation of nerve impulses to many nerve centers. To these components, Pavlov added cortical and subcortical influences, the mosaic action of the brain, the effect of sleep on the spread of inhibition, and the origin of neurotic disturbances principally through a collision, or conflict, between cortical excitation and inhibition. Beginning about 1930, Pavlov tried to apply his laws to the explanation of human psychoses. He assumed that the excessive inhibition characteristic of a psychotic person was a protective mechanism, shutting out the external world in that it excluded injurious stimuli that had previously caused extreme excitation. In Russia this idea became the basis for treating psychiatric patients in quiet and non-stimulating external surroundings. During this period Pavlov announced the important principle of the language function in human beings, as based on long chains of conditioned reflexes involving words. The function of language involves not only words, he held, but an elaboration of generalizations not possible in animals lower than humans. Pavlov's relationships with the communists and the Soviet government were unique not only for the Soviet Union, but also for the history of science. Although he was never a politician, he spoke fearlessly for what he considered the truth. In 1922, during the distressing conditions in the aftermath of the Russian Revolution of 1917, he requested permission from Vladimir Lenin to transfer his laboratory abroad. Lenin denied this request, saying that Russia needed scientists such as Pavlov and that Pavlov should have the same food rations as an honored communist. Although it was a period of famine, Pavlov refused, I will not accept these privileges unless you give them to every one of my collaborators. In spite of many honors granted him by Soviet officials, he upbraided them openly. After returning from his first visit to the United States in 1923, the second was in 1929. He publicly denounced communism, stated that the basis for international Marxism was false, and said, for the kind of social experiment that you are making, I would not sacrifice a frog's hind legs. In 1924, when the sons of priests were expelled from the Military Medical Academy in Leningrad, the former Imperial Medical Academy, he resigned his chair of physiology, announcing, I also am the son of a priest, and if you expel the others I will go too. In 1927, Distressed that his was the only negative vote in the Academy of Sciences against the newly recommended Red Professors, he wrote to Joseph Stalin, protesting, on account of what you are doing to the Russian intelligentsia, demoralizing, annihilating, depraving them, I am ashamed to be called a Russian. In the late 1920s, as an anti-communist gesture, he refused Nikolai Bukharin, the Soviet Commissar of Education, admission to his laboratory, though the laboratory was supported by government funds administered by Bukharin. During the last two years of his life, Pavlov gradually ceased these excoriations and even stated that he hoped to see the success of the government at the helm of his country. This change of heart may have been a result of increased government support of science, and of his own feelings of patriotism when war with Japan seemed imminent. He was never a communist, however, nor was he responsible for the technique of brainwashing that has sometimes been ascribed to him. In personal habits, Pavlov was extremely punctual, never missing an appointment, it was claimed, and arriving on time in the laboratory even when there was revolutionary activity on the streets. To a collaborator who explained his 10 minute delay as a result of the shooting, Pavlov exclaimed, What difference does a revolution make when you have experiments to do in the laboratory? He was a bold, vehement nonconformist both in science and in his personal life, he fiercely took up the cudgel for what he believed, regardless of the force of his opposition. Although Pavlov held to scientific agnosticism, he considered true religion beneficial. He said that he envied no one anything except his wife her devout religious faith. Pavlov's method of studying the normal, healthy animal in natural conditions made possible his contributions to science. He was able to formulate the idea of the conditioned reflex because of his ability to reduce a complex situation to the simple terms of an experiment. Recognizing that in so doing he omitted the subjective component, 
He insisted that it was not possible to deal with mental phenomena scientifically except by reducing them to measurable physiological quantities. Although Pavlov's work laid the basis for the scientific analysis of behavior, and notwithstanding his stature as a scientist and physiologist, his work was subject to certain limitations. Philosophically, while recognizing the preeminence of the subjective and its independence of scientific methods, he did not, in his enthusiasm for science, clarify or define this separation. Clinically, he uncritically accepted psychiatric views concerning schizophrenia and paranoia, and he adopted such neural concepts as induction and irradiation as valid for higher mental activity. Many psychiatrists now consider his explanations too limited, and some neurophysiologists have taken greater interest in other developments, such as electrophysiology and biochemistry. In contrast to Sherrington, Pavlov had few prominent students outside Russia. His method of working with the normal, healthy, unanesthetized animal over its entire life has not been generally accepted in physiology.